Pittsburgh Steelers say they have found their guy, but they are wrong. On the surface, it looks like they do. Kenny Pickett took over in Week 4, led them to a 7-6 record, going 5-1 in his final six as a rookie. There were four game-winning drives, clutch performances, Mike Tomlin proclamations and affirmations. But when diving into the film and combing through his stats, the Steelers might be getting some fool's gold. Pickett struggles specifically against zone coverage if cast a shadow over his perceived to be promising rookie season and reveals several deeper rooted issues to his game that have to be fixed now or he will never be the guy the Steelers think they have. For quarterbacks, man coverage is all about identifying matchups and leverage to determine if a receiver is open, but zone coverage is completely different. You have to process the type of coverage to anticipate where defenders are going, where your receivers will be open, and where there will be open space. Well, to put it flatly, Pickett is one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL against zone. His yards per attempt is abysmal, he puts the ball into harm's way way too often, and he leaves the pocket unnecessarily when he should be staying in to find guys coming open. When his read is defined, he has a good arm and can make difficult throws with great purpose, but when he has to get to his second and third read is when things go off the rails. His primary issue is his struggles anticipating open space, which is critical to beating zone coverage, and that snowballs into other areas. It makes sense watching him succeed more against man than zone, because he has a tendency to freeze within the down when making his decision, what we'll call his mental snapshot, and struggles to move off of that split-second moment when pulling the trigger. Man coverage is easier to read when somebody is open in that moment the QB is gearing up to throw, but in zone, it's much more difficult. You can't tell during that split second, you have to anticipate what comes after it. Take this example against the Bengals, where the Steelers have a good call with the scissors concept because it cuts the deep half safety, well, into half. With the Bengals rolling into cover two zone with two deep defenders, the goal of any good concept is to put one defender into conflict, where he has to choose which one out of two receivers to cover, which is exactly what Scissors is designed to do. Either Von Bell stays tight to the sideline to guard against Pat Fryermuth, which would leave George Pickens free to hit his head on the goalpost, or protect that post, which would open up Fryermuth to catch and wheel up for a touchdown. To hold the flat defender underneath, Najee Harris runs this little check down. So really, it's a 3 over 2 overload, where Pickett just needs to stand in the pocket and read Bell, then attack the open space. But like I said, when he gets to the top of his drop, he reads bodies nearby receivers and can't process the open space of the corner, has a clean pocket, but checks the ball down too quickly. You can see his eyes trained to his left on the scissors concept, but with a clean pocket, he's too quick to find his other check down underneath. The issue with this kind of black or white, is he open now, yes or no thinking, is you'll never force defenses out of zone. The Steelers have Deontay Johnson, Pickens, Fryermuth, now Allen Robinson, guys you want the defense to have to guard one-on-one -on -one in man, but if defenses watch the film and take even a cursory look at these stats, they'll keep sitting in zone and force Pickett to leave massive plays on the field. This leads us right into his next issue, which is struggling to push the ball down the field against zone. He finished 62nd in air yards with just 7 per attempt, air yards being how far down the field you throw the ball, and that's because he doesn't anticipate to attack open space. Against too deep cover 2 zone, cornerbacks will bump the outside receivers to slow their vertical release, then play underneath in the flats. Here it actually looks like the Raiders are playing four deep quarters instead of two deep cover two because they want Kenny to think he can hit this out route to Fryermuth because he loves it. They know he throws it over and over and over again. So to counter that, they show him pre-snap. Fryermuth has the linebacker tucked inside of him so he has plenty of space towards the sideline and that Pickett has free access to hit him. But when they rotate the corner down, now he has to counter the counter and hit Johnson up the sideline, but he's not capable. I didn't see him do it once in the 10 games I charted. This comes back to the rigidity of his mental snapshot, where at the top of his drop he sees Deontay is covered by the corner, but has to know that the whole shot is how you get defenses out of cover 2 zone, so if he hits it, he can then keep targeting Fryermuth outside. By not attacking down the field against zone coverage, you alleviate the vertical stress you put on defenders. Literally every receiver is open on this play, all five of them but each of the inside linebackers can condense and sink down on the running back because they know the checkdown is coming and that it's always coming. 
These processing anticipation errors are exacerbated by the fact that Pickett looks to get out of the pocket way too quickly. He has his mental snapshot and sees guys aren't open, even though we know they're gonna come open, and then takes off from the pocket, usually when he shouldn't. He had the second highest short dropback rate, think one or three step quick game, but also the fifth highest rate of plays over two and a half seconds. This iteration of the offense is designed for the ball to come out quick, but Kenny isn't getting the ball out quick, instead going blind, then running for his life. This limits his ability to hit deeper concepts down the field because instead of sitting in the pocket and letting longer developing plays, well, develop, he's taking off from the pocket and leaving those receivers open down the field. It's crucial to stay in the pocket against zone because of how your eyes affect the defense. Since their eyes are on your eyes, naturally backside concepts are going to open up because they're drawn to where your eyes start. When Pickett stands in the pocket, these backside patterns keep coming open, but he's leaving big 10 to 20 yard chunk plays on the field. In fact, even when he does throw passes to that area, against zone he completes just 52.9%, which is also 60 seconds in the NFL. He's not as comfortable when he has to anticipate open space and then throw into it, and he struggled throughout the year to consistently hit open passes to that area of the field, whereas against man coverage, his completion jumped up to 66.7%, which ranked 17th. To improve, he has to hold on to the ball longer to let plays develop, identify where the open space is, and who's running into it, and he can do all those, just needs to way more consistently. Here he gets the perfect look where it's play action so there's no pressure from the defensive line, cover 3 zone, which is perfect against this deep cross, both corners have to play outside of the receivers to funnel them inside to their safety help, they don't want the receivers to get outside of them because they don't have any help there, but the safety is really put into a bind. Both receivers are running vertical so he has to protect deep, and with the linebackers sucked up from the play fake, there is a crap ton of space open in the intermediate area of the field. Pickett has to know there's all that space deep, but also has to be wary of any sinking linebackers. However, he still takes that mental snapshot where Pickens is technically covered, but about to break free, and instead of throwing to him or his late flat route underneath, he wastes the play and just throws the ball away. Hanging longer on receivers to see if they come open will help. For example, against more isolated routes outside against cover 3 zone, where Deontay Johnson and Pickens kept getting super frustrated because Kenny's just checking down too quick or breaking the pocket, like here on this 3rd and 18 where, let's remember that cover 3 zone has those corners playing deep and outside, well, cause they're so deep, anything underneath of them is pretty much wide open. Marlon Humphrey gets too deep here and Deontay breaks this thing off coming open 18 yards down the field, just what they need but Pickett checks down too early and you can see Deontay's frustration. Then just a few minutes later, he's once again the primary, but Pickett breaks the pocket instead of hanging in it and Deontay freaks out even more. Even the game winner, which is an awesome play, kind of shows some of the issues we're talking about, where George Pickens comes wide open if Pickett would just stay in the pocket. We'll see a better view of it from the other angle. And while this play does have a high degree of difficulty, so you have to give him credit, He's just sprinting out of a clean pocket right into danger, and you can't live on plays like this. He had the 6th highest scramble rate against zone coverage, and a lot of the time he's just breaking the pocket to break the pocket so he can't throw to his open guys downfield. With all of this said, there was definitely some improvement shown as he progressed throughout the season. Mike Tomlin cited that improvement as he proclaimed Pickett their guy, and I don't want that improvement to go unnoticed. He started to push balls into tighter zone windows more comfortably, he was anticipating a bit better and making challenging throws down the field, and while I don't love his propensity to constantly prematurely break the pocket, because I don't think he's talented enough for that to be the foundation of his game, there were times where it was necessary and was a strength, I'm just worried it'll hinder his development because he will need to win from the pocket to be successful in the long term. The Matt Canada offensive scheme is a whole issue into itself. I don't know why you'd want your rookie quarterback to be placed into this system and then develop in this system in year two as well. A system with, as Fryermuth said, there were no hot routes, meaning there were no answers against the Blitz, which is just insane for an NFL offense. So the offensive scheme is a problem, but Canada is still at the helm. Pickett is tethered to him, at least for now, so I have to analyze things as such. Kenny has some glaring weaknesses that he'll need to iron out, 
and all of them come out to play when the Steelers are facing zone coverage. Defensive coordinators are already cracking their knuckles watching all of this in preparation for next year, and see plain as day he has difficulty anticipating open space, he is too quick to check the ball down, and he breaks the pocket unnecessarily. Mike Tomlin and Steelers Nation believe that they have their guy moving forward, but I believe these issues will linger throughout his career. Yes, he could improve them and make me eat my words, it has happened before, but I see blatant flaws on his film. Pittsburgh thinks they have their next franchise quarterback, and I hope they do, but when you dive deeper into who he really is, I think they don't. This